Hello and welcome my friends and viewers to this week's episode of Legend Lore, where I draw and talk about monsters, characters, gods, and other things from D&D 5th edition, all while giving a small but quickly digestible history about them. Together we'll go over their history within the game, how they utilize in the modern edition, and how you guys can utilize them in your own games. This week we're going to be covering a Clavdra, drow matron of House El Serve, and a devout priestess of the goddess Loth, whom we actually just covered in a recent video that I've linked in the description below. And getting right into it, Eclavdra was a character conceived by D&D creator Gary Gygax, first appearing in the Hall of the Fire Giant King section of the old three-part first edition adventure module, Against the Giants. She is also a major villain in Gygax's series of Gord the Rogue fantasy novels, one of which actually shares the same name as the aforementioned module. Originally depicted as a servant of the Elder Elemental Eye, an aspect of the Dark God Therisden, Eclavdra has since changed into a very powerful, if not the most powerful, priestess of Loth. Eclavdra is said to be totally devoid of compassion, as well as a cunning and cruel strategist who seeks to remove any threat to her and her goddess before it has a chance to grow. She is the leader of the noble Dark Elf House of El Serve, and to speak to her power and influence, one of her previous consorts was the Demon Lord of Lust himself, Gratzd, with whom she has a half-demon, half-drow child named Athix. Other events that occurred involving Eclavdra include organizing a cult of giants to worship the Elder Elemental Eye, having a clone named Lita who becomes a lover to Gord over the course of his novels, and becoming an ambassador to Ayuz, another son of the Lean Lord Grotzd. Above all, Eclavdra serves as Loth's chief diplomat and representative when it comes to affairs having to do with divine politicking, and despite her having served multiple masters, it is Eclavdra's ambition and determination that Loth truly prizes, even beyond loyalty. As such, she has been identified as an Exarch of Loth, Exarchs being powerful entities who serve as near-divine champions to a deity, such as the Red Knight to the god Tempest, or Maglubia the goblin hero to the god Bane. Mechanically, Eclavdra was given a full stat block back in D&D 4th edition, appearing in the 3rd Monster Manual, and I have done the work of converting it over to 5th edition for you guys to use should you want to include her in your games. It's linked in the description below, but for a quick overview, Eclavdra's power focuses on enchantment magic, psychic damage, and using her powerful tentacle rod, which is the basis for the magic item that we have at the end of this video. She can buff drow and spider allies with a constant aura, force enemies to kneel before her, and even teleport short distances to give her mobility in combat. As such, be sure to deploy her with a ton of allies to soak up attention and damage from the enemy, allowing her to shine as a battle priest by casting spells, buffing her warriors, and finally bringing the hurt whenever the enemy finally does manage to close a distance. I'd recommend using enemies like Dracoloths, demons, spider guides such as Choldress and Chitines, and powerful drow and drider allies who are devoted to protecting their priestess, as her battle is meant to be a capstone for a very long-running campaign. It is high level, and also make sure to make use of her word of recall should things get a little hairy for her. I think I've made a decent conversion of her stats, and would love to hear how you guys decide to use her in your games. In terms of Eclavdra's greatest allies and foes, the lifestyle of base lord dark elves in D&D makes it very hard for her to have any true friends. The closest would be her god Loth, who enjoys seeing her thrive throughout the realms, even if she does end up betraying her in the end, and possibly Grotz, whom Eclavdra seduced and had a child with at the behest of Loth. In this regard, she and the witch queen Tasha, otherwise known as Iglyf, who also has a video made about her, are very similar, and I can imagine a very interesting alliance between the two of them as they sit for tea and compare notes in regards to their respective diabolical schemes. The two of them would make for a very interesting villainous duo. Likewise, Grotz could easily fall on the side of the enemy for Eclavdra, as it seems that their relationship lacks the complication and her dedication that his and Tasha's did. She could also bear the disdain of Therisden due to fleeing back to the worship of Loth, and you could count most gods who are against Loth to be Eclavdra's enemies, as well as any agents who may serve them. Now, if you guys are unfamiliar with my personal view of Loth and her depiction, I have her as less of an evil, seductive, conniving goddess that the base lord portrays her as, and more of a warrior who led the elven people to the Underdark during the chaos of Therisden's arrival on the Material Plane, all in hopes to help save them. Upon encountering the aberrations within the Underdark, Loth adopted a militant, harsh way of life that made her people strong enough to survive, but also turned them cruel and cautious in the process. As such, I can see Eclavdra fitting in one of two ways, as a divine servitor of either Loth or Therisden. The former has Eclavdra as the strongest warrior in Loth's service, a powerful cleric who wields not only the divine power gifted to her by the Spider Queen, but has adopted the psionic energies of the aberrations that they fight in order to form her own created weapon, the Tentacle Rod. As both her personal armament and a badge of office, she rules over her people with an iron fist, smiting all all danger wherever it stands, be it foreign or domestic. Your players can encounter her as a traditional adventuring party, or if you want to get a little creative, you can have an all Dark Elf party serve at her behest and go on various missions both within the Underdark and on the surface, tracking leads and battling against enemies of both her and the Spider Queen. Meanwhile, the latter depiction has her betraying Loth instead, returned to the surface in order to serve the chained Oblivion, either in hopes of being spared of his wrath, or out of a true genuine devotion and embracing of the madness that he emanates. As such, she would be the absolute high priestess and herald of his destruction. And of course, the head of your garden variety nihilistic death cult that serves as the enemy for many an adventuring party. 
This depiction is more in line with the traditional evil villain and is simpler to run, but does lack any of the nuance or depth that the previous incarnation has. However, your party could be tasked by Loth to hunt her down and kill her for her betrayal, and be granted a sufficient boon in return for their success, possibly even taking a Clash's place as the highest of high priestesses. Both versions of Loth are useful in their own ways, but the former bears a little bit more backstory, deeper motivations, and interesting threads for your players to interact with, while the latter is easier for dungeon masters to stick in their game without many questions or difficulties. Quests inspired by a Clavger were mostly covered in the previous section, but two characters that I did extract from her lore that I think would be very interesting to have in your game are Athlix, her half-demon son by Grast, and Dejralve, a Loth priestess and a Clavger's direct protege. Starting with Athlix, he is, as I mentioned before, the child of a union between Grast and Eclavdra, and the half-brother of Ayus, son of Grast and Tasha. His conception, interestingly enough, alludes to the creation of the Dragoloth, a monster that is born when a dark elf priestess copulates with the Gabraisu demon. He also has aspects of the Cambion, which are again described as half-fiend children. Athix does have Eclavdra's pure black skin, elven ears, and silvery hair, but Grast's crown of horns and bearing six fingers and toes on each hand and foot. He serves predominantly as a general of Grotz's demonic armies, and not much is really said about his relationship or perception of his mother. Given D&D's base lore of Lothian Drought, it's safe to assume that he does not have a good relationship with his mother, and was abandoned when Loth's need for Grotz's seduction was over. Grotz, being the cunning opportunist that he is, would take him in and raise him as a son, warrior, and general. As such, I believe Athlix would be cunning, strategic, and hold a particular disdain for Dark Elf and Lothian clergy especially, cutting them down any chance that he gets. Use him as a powerful villain for campaigns concerning demons or Grotz, with him being the martial warrior at Grotz's side when seduction and manipulation fail to achieve his goals. His history paints him as a fighter slash blackguard paladin, and I found a pretty cool stat block to use for 5th edition listed below, but I think I might make my own in the future should Athix decide to get his own video, but again that's all up to you guys. Next we have Adralve, a dark elf inquisitor and direct protege of Eclavdra herself. Most of the lore exemplifies her as a former slaver with little backstory who is entrenched within a lot of the negative aspects of Drow in early D&D, so I decided to clean her up a little bit and have her serve as Eclavdra's right hand, closest lieutenant, and possibly even lover depending on the tone of the campaign, but that's more subjective. She is being trained to become Eclavdra's replacement should she either be slain by her enemies or simply pass on into the divine to serve her goddess further. As such, Eldravi, similar to Athex, is serious, stoic, and a loyal cleric who serves her priestess faithfully and without question. If Eclavdra is your campaign's main enemy, have Eldravi serve as a mini-boss for your party to encounter, and have her defeat and or death be the fire that truly sparks Eclavdra's wrath and hatred for your heroes. Likewise, you can have Eldravi serve as an ally to the party should they serve Eclavdra or Loth, giving them missions and being their point of contact before they earn enough merit to finally be graced with the presence of Loth's high priestess. One idea I've toyed with is having her find the party and plead for them to help her in convincing Eclavdra to leave the surface of Therizden, who has since manipulated and tainted the High Priestess into serving his dark ends. Like Athex, I've also found a very interesting stat block for you to use, but you could also use the traditional Drow Inquisitor one from Mordekane and Stoma Foes, or the new Monsters of Multiverse book. And finally, for our magic item this evening, we have the Tentacle Rod, a powerful scepter shaped to mimic the form of tentacles that most aberrations bear. Forged by a Eclavdra herself from various parts of many terrible creatures in the Underdark, it wields great psionic power and requires a strong will to be able to even wield it. The rod requires attunement by a Cleric of Loth or a Dark Elf, and is considered a plus 2 mace that deals 1d8 bludgeoning damage and 1d8 psychic damage on a successful hit. The wielder can also use the rod to cast the spell command at will, and the enemy makes their saving throw a disadvantage if the wielder chooses the grovel option specifically. It also grants the wielder resistance to psychic damage. Additionally, once per short rest, the wielder may activate the rod as an action upon making a successful attack with it. The target of the attack suffers an additional 3d8 psychic damage and must make both a constitution and wisdom saving throw. Upon failing the constitution saving throw, they become vulnerable to poison damage for one minute, and upon failing the wisdom saving throw, they are dazed and their movement speed is halved for one minute. The DC for the saves is 16, or you can use your spellcasting save DC if it is higher, and I've included the item stat block in the description below. For this item, I wanted to test out the effects that deal multiple saving throws at once, as well as calling upon some of the abilities that I gave for her in her stat block. You can choose which aberration this rod could be made from or have it be multiple, and it is a very great reward for defeating her. You can even go further and have her trust a player who has shown their loyalty to her and Loth, bestowing upon them the weapon temporarily to wield against the enemies of her and the Spider Queen. Definitely see what kind of crazy things you guys can do with it. And that's a clap for a High Priestess of Loth, everybody. I want to thank all you guys for watching, and if you guys liked the video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe, as well as press the little bell icon in the corner to be notified of future videos. If you guys want to vote on the next Legend Lore, please check out the link in the description below to decide between the classes of Fighter, Warlock, and Rogue. Also, let me know if you guys use the NPCs, items, or Eclavdra herself from this video, or if you guys learned anything new or useful about Dark Elves, the High Priestess, Slothian culture, etc, etc, as well as what you guys would like to see in upcoming videos. But until then, 
I'll see you guys next time.